Okay, ready to go. You started. Uh, uh, mm. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to me puking up pizza. No. Welcome to another episode of the Horshawn Hunters Guild. Uh, this is the uh, the third and final solo session featuring Demarion, who is dead, maybe. <laughs> God damn it. Uh, uh, oh, there we go. Also feed five hours of me belching like a disgusting person. So let me get musics. When we last saw Dan He was in the chambers where the party had found the heart of Hoshan. And after the party had encountered Nyarlahotep, who stopped them from to start destroying the heart, Nyarlahotep did something to him. Which caused Demeron to fall into a comato into a comatose state. No one exactly knows what has happened to him. I think Nyarlhotep blatantly stated exactly what he did. And as the party was returning to Hoshan, Demeron was taken to the hospital. 100% trustworthy hospital with the trustworthy Dr. Pond. Absolutely. There's absolutely nothing wrong with Pond. She, she shouldn't be a patient at all. I mean, completely <laughs> sane. <laughs> it's not like she's a devil worship. Oh. Well, it's not like she tortures her. Pa- <laughs> Well, at least she's not Oleander. <laughs> at, 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 least, at, at least she doesn't kick puppies. <laughs> she may kick the cat. She just kicks Ryan out. Just wake up. And then Ryan gets healed. Okay. Anyways, Demeron, you find yourself floating. And just a sea of everlasting nothingness. So is it like just floating in a void? Pretty much. I take a look at I wake up, take a look at my surroundings, and then try to figure out how the fuck I'm floating. Do like the frantically trying to run but going nowhere thing. You try and move. But you can't. You try and move your arms, your legs, your head. You can't move your body at all. I I try to say hello. You speak. Your voice echoes into the void, spreading out endlessly until it eventually goes silent. Uh, I speak As... of... Okay, you go. After an undiscernible amount of time, you begin to feel your surroundings coming to the sound of rain, sounds of battle. You're finally able to move, and when you do, you find yourself standing in a massive, endless plain.
was at 200%. Ow. <laughs> okay, I can hear now. All right. Make a perception. Perception is that. Wow. All right, it's fine. When you look around, you hear the sounds of battle. Predators roaring in victory, ungulates screaming in terror, as they are violently and mercilessly ripped to shreds. Mm -hmm. You see a small predator, almost a young saberkin, um, barely, barely able to walk or fend for itself, huddling underneath a tree, shivering. I walk, if I can, over to that predator. You can. As you I... get closer, you recognize who this small Saberkin predator is. It's, it's you. <laughs> it's me. It you. <laughs> yes, but it is you, cold, wet, and very, shivering. Very clearly starving, shivering, and terrified. Uh, I walk up real close and, uh, th then try to see if there's anybody else around that I'd recognize. You see nobody. The sounds of battle are so distant, they could be miles away. Uh, I look at little me and say, uh, why do you not get up and fight for yourself? When you say this, it it seems to look up somehow it's looking at you, but not exactly white at you. So it's like looking through me? Yeah. Like I'm there, but not there? No, it looks more like there may be someone behind you. I spin around. You turn around and you see another familiar person standing there with an umbrella shields himself from the rain. You see a much, much younger flag. Flag walks forward and right through you as he kneels down to the younger Demeron. You. You've been abandoned, haven't you? The scared, small predator slowly nods his head. Your family discarded you for being weak, small, fragile. 
while they go on to slaughter this planet's inhabitants, they left you to die. The young Demeron whimpers, beginning to cry. Flag smiles and extends his hoof. Come with me. I'll take care of you. I'll make you strong. I'll see to it that we show your family they were wrong. Hesitant, the young Demeron stretches out a paw, and then time freezes. From behind you, Demeron, you hear a voice. Is this really how it happened? Uh, I try to look behind me then. Hang on, let me send you a message really quick. Okay. Or maybe I can find it really quick. Here we go. Oh. <clears throat> All right. I had to find a picture really quick. Okay. You see this person standing behind you. Uh. Ah. 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 I, I, uh, see him and confused and say I I, I, I don't remember <clears throat> he walks forward this is the moment when you first met flag many years ago hmm. but is that really how it happened Ryan kind of backs away a little bit, shaking his head. It's, it's a lie. It's all a lie. Hmm. I'm surprised. Many versions of you I've seen go through this trial. And the many... I have not seen dismiss these events so quickly. I, I don't know what the truth is, but this is not it. B B uh, uh, Ryan is somewhat clawing at his uh, face now, trying to drag out the truth, per se, try to remember it. The truth is locked deep inside you. Nyarlahotep sealed your memories away. However, you could not get rid of them. Think back. It all started in one place. You know where that is. Um... Ryan continues clawing at his face, but I don't. 
I don't know anything anymore. Everything you know. is alone. The place predators belonged. The place they were for a thousand years. Uh, Ryan looks quizzically at the newcomer. The hold? As you say this, your, sen- your scenery begins to change, molding and transforming. You find yourself in a dark, almost similar to the void you were floating in. However, you sense the ground below you, hard and cold like stone. A dark purple mist floats through the air. You look around. Hundreds upon thousands, not not thousands, hundreds of predators sitting around, barely clinging on to life. Hungry, angry. In the distance, you hear two predators fighting over a scrap of rotten meat. Out loud, I say, I, I know, I know this. This is where you were born. For a thousand years, the predators were confined in this place, the hold. Barely able to survive almost forcing themselves to become almost cannibalistic to survive. The dead were not buried, but turned into meals for the living. All so that they could see the hope of escaping their prison. He begins to walk forward further into the dark into the dark cold. I follow him. All right. After a few minutes, he comes to a small grouping. Young predators, old predators are like huddled around an ancient saberkin. His fur no longer black, but almost gray. As you see him, a name pops into your head. Elder Z. That's pronounced like X-I-E. Okay. I, I, I've i seen this man, this Saberkin. I, I know him. Elder Z. And among these, and among these, uh, among this group of young and old predators, you see yourself not unlike those who have, who are living with no hope and no life. Your eyes are surprisingly filled with hope and wonder. Listening to Elder Z's stories of the outside world. She speaks of a bright yellow fire in the sky, warm, 
It gives life to all in ha to all things. You would sit here for days, Demeron. Listening to his stories. There are so many like you. Many listen to his stories for hope, but you... You were different. You listen them to them to to dream of one day being outside. Do you remember? Ryan uh, gently nods his head starting to remember small details. Anyways, as, uh, as you're watching, you hear a, a, a young predator speak up. Elder Z, when will those doors open? It's been so long, hasn't it? Give me a second. The time grows short, my child. Nearly a thousand years we have waited. But soon, the magic that holds these doors sealed is soon to wane. The doors will open and we will see the light once more. Will the world will the world be able to accept us? That I cannot answer. We were born from the devourer, born from darkness. And the world may still yet see us as monsters. And many here still share that same philosophy that we are nothing more than eaters, killers, monsters. But I believe that is a old, the, uh... an old and dying way of life. I believe that with you, my children, you will be able to forge a new destiny, a new history. One that I hope predators and ungulates will be able to live in peace. The masked man begins to uh, speak. Elder Z was a rather unique one. So many wanted vengeance for their ancestors, wanted to break out and take their vengeance on the ungulates who had damned them for a thousand years of torment. <laughs> Barely any of them 
even knew why. All they knew is that a thousand years ago, their ancestors were banished here. They knew not the reason. They cared not for the reason. They simply cried out for vengeance. Cried out for fresh meat. Delta Z was one of the very few who wanted peace. The uh, the the scenery around you begins to mold and form once again. Still in the same place, but you watch as one by one those who were young, older, and disappear from the group. And so the group is only a small few. But you, you are still there. With those same, those same eyes that never lost a shred of hope. As time resumes, you hear Elder Z speaking of his stories, you from outside you hear a massive, <laughs> violent and powerful explosion, and even from inside you feel it reverberating, sending dust and fog and bits of bone flying past you. All is silent. And then you see a crack of light. The doors slowly opening. Elder Z, the doors. This. This does not bode well. It's... It is too early. His... His... His thoughts and worried are suddenly just drowned out as you hear a massive echoing throughout the hold of triumphant, violent, hungry roars. And you just see a wave, waves after waves of predators rushing out of the hold. You hear Elder Z trying to warn them to not go, but no one listens. You watch the predators pass through you and through the masked man. This is the moment. This is where everything began. The moment the cult of the dragon broke the hold open. And began this damned timeline. I look at the mass man. How do you, who are you and how do you know all this? You see him move his cape, <laughs> revealing a card on. Let's see, where is it? Mm -hmm. Oh, it's uh, revealing a card resting in. resting on one of his gloves. An observer playing card. The Jack of Clubs. 
because I have seen it. Because the King of Hearts has gone through so many timelines similar to this, looking for an answer. And I've seen so many versions of you going through these trials, remembering these memories. Um, Go ahead. If you watched, why didn't you help? That's all you do is watch. You watch us die, you watch the world burn, and you do nothing. We can't interfere. Then why are you here? Because while we cannot interfere, we can help those who can change the world, change the timeline, fix it. You, Demeron, are a vital role in this play. How am I a part of anything? I was lied to. The only reason I didn't kill uh, Angulets is because Nyarlathotep stopped me by uh, repressing my memories. Is that really true? Brian stammers a bit, just as I don't know. How long? Have you been with the guild so long? And at any time, you could have, you could have betrayed them. At any time, you could have sank your fangs into any of your comrades, and no one would have been none the wiser. Tell me. Flag, Nyarlahotep, sealed your memories. But what about the memories you made? Ryan just thinks of his party. All the things they've done. One by one, you see them just kind of surrounding you. The memories of your life as Flag. They are fake. But your memories with them, with Lily, Lucas, Wyoming, Bao. Awful. They are all very, very real. Conveniently left out Nadine and Jack. Of course. <laughs> And I wonder, had Flag not intervened, had Flag not changed your memories, do you know where you would be? The Jack of Club seems to wave his hand and the scenario changes before him. And you find yourself leading a 
you find a version of yourself leading an army of predators. And on the other side, you see your friends standing in opposition. And in your place, where you should be, is an ungulate you do not recognize. If it weren't for Flag, and perhaps this would have been your fate, leading the charge against the guild, in opposition against the party you, in this timeline, you call friends, but in this are your enemies. Perhaps this is the timeline that was meant to be. Or perhaps, even without Nyarlathotep's influence, you would have joined the guild regardless. I have seen many possibilities and many outcomes. At the end of the day, Despite your memories and every timeline, you are the one who decides your destiny, no matter who influences your memories or not. Yeah, I'm, am I still in the scene where I'm leading the charge against the guild? Yeah, you're 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 there. You see it. Am I looking at like uh, on a cliff? I see the two sides colliding. Yeah. Some okay. Uh, Ryan looks at the scene with tears in his eyes, and then he walks over to the side with his friends, like, not walks all the way over, but clearly choosing that side, and says, then I choose this side. <laughs> Impressive. Very impressive, Demeron. I've seen many timelines where, in this exact situation, you do not choose. I've seen many situations where you chose the opposite side. But never... Have I seen a timeline where you have chosen so quickly and so emphatically? This is the only way there can be peace. I will live out the Elder's dream, my dream. Good. Then... You know what you must do. The crawling chaos still has its influence over you. You must destroy it if you wish to be free. Ryan looks up, no longer like depressed or sad like he has been this entire time. And with the familiar fire in his eyes, he just says how. Look around. It's all around you already. As he says this, you see 
you see the scenario slowly melting into somewhat of a, uh, I guess, melting into this void of colors and shapes beyond comprehension. See a cosmos of stars and shapes in the sky. The scenery around you melts away into a pool in the center of what was once the field of battle. I look around, taking in the entire scenario, and if the jacket club is still there, ask, what is this? This is his shadow. The influence that holds, that still clutches your mind. You must destroy it if you wish to be free. What happens next? I cannot help you. Your power alone determines your fate now. The pool in the center begins taking shape and it forms into a shadowy version of flag. Uh, Ryan looks at him and uh, says, uh, you'll control me no longer, and lunges at him. Give me a second. I'm trying to find if I have the right one. I'm going to fight level 20 near the hotel, right? That's, that's the shadow. Maybe. <laughs> Question, does this count as dim light, this area? Uh, yeah. Cool, okay. All right. No, he's not only level 20. Oh, it's just a shadow. This is just a shadow? I'll tell you right now. Um... Well, you, you'll you'll see when he finally takes the stage. When Yarlhotep actually gets into a fight, you'll understand. Anyways, uh... Where is... Oh my god, old, these old ass... These old ass fucking... Sheets. Alright, anyways, roll initiative. Okay. So, in dim light, I can basically have hips. This is nice. Uh, initiative, initiative, plus seven. Nineteen. All right, you're going first. All right. That's initiative for boss time against the shadow of Nyarlahotep. I will make a uh, stealth check. Does this guy have dark vision, by the way? Maybe. Okay. Let's make a stealth check, because if he doesn't, then I get concealment. Uh. That's my stealth check. A pretty shitty stealth check. Roll the six. Am I hidden? Are you? We'll see. He needs to make an opposing perception. Well. I am not. 
He sees you. Well, how far apart are we? We, you are about sixty feet. I'm going first, so he's flat-footed anyway. Mm-hmm. So I am going to. Pull out my rifle. Wait, do I have that? No, I was passed out, so I shouldn't have that till I wake up. Yeah, I only no, have, you don't have that. Yeah, you don't have it. You don't have anything until you wake up. Yeah, okay. You have, uh, you have what you had on you before you passed out. Okay, so I don't have my rifle yet. Okay, I pull out my cross for a uh, composite short bow. I um say some magic words, and a thing happens, and then I attack him. Alright. Hocus Pocus. Yep, those are the magic words, pal. Hocus Pocus. Uh... Does that hit his flow? Yeah! <laughs> Roll to confirm. Oh, come on. Please say that hit. That is a crit. Cool. So let me get the critical generator up. Uh, it has a times two. A right, times two. All right. Yes. Uh, any fire immunity? No. No. Okay. So that's two d six. Three d six. All right. Roll double damage. Okay, so double damage. Uh, double damage, uh, Sneak's not doubled. I know Sneak's not, so it's just double damage. Double then... damage, uh, double modifiers. Okay. There you go. All right. And then I attack again. You attack oh, wait. again. He needs to make a fort save. That was a poison arrow. Uh, DC 15. Oh, it's pretty mm. shitty. Doesn't seem to af that doesn't seem to affect him. Okay. Now back to not having true strike. Mm. I shoot him again. You shoot him again. And that does not. Oof. All right. Roll to confirm. <sighs> That's a crit fail. What am I doing to myself now? Let's see, what do you do to yourself? Oh, instant death. I guess I'm controlled by Nero <laughs> Hotel forever. I know, okay. All right. All right, you take a minus two penalty on all range attack rolls for one minute. Well then. I might as well not shoot another arrow, so that's my turn. All right. It is his turn. <laughs> All right. Make a reflex save. A reflex save? Reflex save, DC 22. Okay. Well then. All right, that fails. He's going to hit you with a fireball. Of course he is.
30 damage. Ouch. And then... That hurt. He is going to... <laughs> Give me just a sec. Alright. Okay, sorry, I'm back. All right. That'll be his turn. I will attempt to Kate another stealth check. All right. That wins. Uh, you said he was 60 feet away? Yep. I am going to move 30 feet. Uh, I'm going to double move to him. And then end my turn. All right. He's going to attempt to make another perception. Please don't make it. Yay. Oof. All right, he doesn't see you. So what can he do? <laughs> wow. Hmm. All right, call a twenty five percent. Uh, what do you mean, call a twenty-five percent? He is trying something. Like one through four, or yeah, like not like one to twenty-five, twenty-six to fifty. Uh, seventy-five like to one hundred. A... All right. Oof. All right. Trying to think. Uh... All right. You see him shoot out a uh, a green ray, but it just barely misses you. Okay. It's your turn. I will attack him. All right. Uh, 
Uh, he is flat footed. Flat footed. 24 hit him? 24 to hit his. Flat foot. Flat foot. Oh, wait, that's a 26, not a 24. I have a plus two. 26. That will miss. Okay. Well, he sees me now. Going to attack him again, just not flat footed. Uh, I'm just not going to hit him, am I? Uh, uh, another 10. Hmm. And now my bite attack. Everything that round missed. All right. It is his turn. What is he going to do here? Hmm. He is, uh, <laughs> All right. He's going to back up, progging an AOO from you. Okay. <sighs> I'm going to use my call trait and reroll that. All right. Didn't hit. Nope. And... He's just gonna chuckle and... Hit you with a magic missile. 20 damage. Ouch. Magic missiles bullshit. You just hear a voice. Are you really going to let him beat you like this? You hear the Jack of Clubs voice. Ryan shakes his head to get rid of the voice and then just lets out a roar as he prepares his next attacks. Remember, this is your mind. You are in control. Why don't you try... I poof my party your... into existence. <laughs> You know what? Roll an impossible task. Uh, what is that? Uh, it's uh, a d20 plus your charisma. Okay. Oh. Okay, so who's ever here? Do you want to join in?
Wyoming Brown and Waffle puff into existence. Because they're the only ones here. <laughs> so Waffle basically just, you know, falls fa face first into the thingy. Now Ryan's just gonna say thank you to Wyoming in person, and he's gonna have no clue why the fuck I'm saying thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yep. What was your initiative, Ryan? My initiative? Uh, oh, you're looking up quick. Uh... 19. 19. All right. Looking for some help, Ryan? Uh, completely uh, flabbergasted that it actually worked and that Wyoming's here. Ryan nods and says, help me beat my foe. With the power of friendship, we can win. Uh, <laughs> I regret <laughs> this now. <laughs> you, you, you can hear Buffer puking somewhere. Why are we sparks and nods? <laughs> By your powers combined. Yeah, in distance you hear a you in the distance you hear a uh, an outer god beyond beyond size and comprehension go. Ugh. <laughs> and I thought I had the dad jokes. <laughs> Wyoming, help me flank. Bow, can I get some heals? And Waffle, do whatever it is you do. <laughs> oh. Waffle waves. Waffle, waffle waves. <laughs> Good enough. He casts guidance. Top of the... Uh... Top of the round. Wyoming. Where did they puff in? Next to me when I was next to the guy, or...? Yeah, they just kind of, like, materialized right next to you. So how far away is he moved back? Like, uh, 30 feet? Oh, they're about... He's about 20 feet away. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to charge him. All right. This is oddly <sighs> fitting that... Uh, his friends help him destroy his demons. You also hear a another echoing voice. And a little something from me. You see a quick flash around the shadow of Nyarlathotep. Tervis! <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> He's here for moral support. <laughs> yeah, he's he's there with some pom poms. Oh uh, yeah, that'll hit. Oh, uh, will that trip? A trip. Will that trip? Yes, it will. All right. Jervis suddenly appears with a pair of pom-poms. You can do it, Demeron. Show that nasty monster. Oh, uh, let's see. Give him the old one-two. Uh, is he taking penalties on this? Uh, the second one is a minus four. All right. Uh, miss on the first, hit on the second. All right. After this fight, I want to know what you actually thought I sh the Jack of Claws was going to suggest. Uh, that will miss. A 
Okay. Those will love us. All right. That's his turn. Not bow. It's your turn. Not bow. Shadow bow. Yeah. Shadow, shadow bow. Mind bow. <laughs> Mind bow. <laughs> Mind shadow bow. Uh, well, he asked for healing, so I'm gonna give it to him. All right. I need it. <laughs> Two things. I'm at thirty health from eighty. Oof. Well. Oof. That's my healing plus twelve. Mm-hmm. Cool. Tank. All right, Ryan, my, it's your turn. My health score is now the meaning of, of the life universe and everything. Oh no. <laughs> Uh, can I get in the flanking position since you moved 20 feet and I have 30 foot movement? Yes, you may. I get in the flanking position with why yo mine. Well, I try to stealth first. Let's see if I can do that. Actually, Nate, that doesn't even help. Because I get sneak anyway. No, I just get in the flanking position. And then I try to attack him. Uh, flank is plus two, right? 23. Oof. Um. A minus four penalty. But I should have stealth. Can I retroactively stealth and see if that hits after I stealth? I'll allow it because it does. Uh. 47. Cool. Alright, so, so that will be a hit. Uh, that 2d6, 70s. What's that? Okay. He has 5 bleed damage, 5 less natural armor if he had any. And I think I'm going to lower his AC even further by a minus two for everybody and a minus four AC against tax again, well, for me. So five bleed damage, minus two AC for anybody trying to hit him, and minus four if I try to hit him. All right. So if he had any natural armor, it's five less. All right. And now I'm going to attack him even more. Thirty-four hit him. That'll hit. Uh, whatever remaining of his natural armor is probably gone by now. It's been gone. Okay. Um. Uh... More attacks. Hang on, I'm trying to count, calculate this. Okay. That was one hell of a good hit. 43 damage. Alright. Uh, one more at full, I think. Yes, one more at That hit him? It hits flat-footed. Ooh, wait. Uh, the, am, am I hitting him in flat-footed right now? Oh, wait. What do you, oh, he knows you're there now, right? He knows I'm there. Only the first hit was on flat-foot. Uh, uh, with the minus four penalty while he's prone, yes, that will hit. Cool. Uh, Thirty-three. All right. With this final stab straight into the heart of the shadow of Nyarlahotep, it lets out an ear-piercing scream as cracks of light begin to surround it. Sorry, and it Muffle. erupts into a violent burst. Waffle waves at him. Waffle waves, or Waffle waves back. Ryan waves back at Waffle. Even though Waze was probably for the exploding god, Shadow. I mean... Explodes explode. and... Small bits of light begin... 
raining down from the sky, clearing away this area of shapes and colors beyond description, leaving a calm, quiet, almost serene darkness. The images of your friends have disappeared. You are left alone. I, uh, say, uh, Jack, are you there? You just hear. <laughs> Jack Javongo. I so want to say something right now, but I swear if I say it, <laughs> Ryan's just going to die on the spot. Brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. I have faith now that this is the timeline where you and your friends will be victorious. With the power of friendship, we defeated my demons. Yeah! <laughs> uh, how do I get out of this uh, mindscape, per se? Ryan just looks around, poking at the ground. Do not worry. Now that you are victorious, you will wake up soon. Don't forget the note I gave you. There I shall still... meet you as soon as I take care of a thing. Good. There are many things that yet need to be explained. Many things that you need to understand. You are tied to a plot that is beyond any of our understanding. Be careful. There are forces yet unseen that you must do battle with. As he begins to fade, your vision begins to brighten. Ryan, before every fades away, he just says, uh, with my friends by my side, we'll win. He says nothing as he disappears. As the light begins to engulf the void, and slowly it engulfs you. A moment later, your eyes open. <laughs> this is pretty cheesy. <laughs> it's, great, it's great cheese. It's good cheese. It's good cheese. It's Gouda cheese. <laughs> it's Gouda cheese. <clears throat> you wake up and see the lights of a hospital above you. <clears throat> uh, do I see Palm? Or anybody, really. The room is surprisingly empty. You find Am yourself... I strapped to the bed? You are not. Uh, I call out for Palm. After a few moments, the door opens and she goes, Tamaran. You're awake. She begins rushing over to you. She begins pulling out a few. Uh, see her pulling out like a small flashlight. Are you okay? I, I'm, I'm fine. She just kind of flashes a light in your eyes to just, you know, the standard doctoral procedure yeah. shit. 
Uh, before she can finish, Brian gets off the bed, grabs her, and says, uh, Mom, you're a crazy bitch, and I think I love you. Date me. All right, Wyoming, I think you just got topped. <laughs> <laughs> he actually did an absolute madman. <laughs> She's just like, she, she blinks for a moment. Uh, <clears throat> um, <clears throat> like blushing lookingly. Um, yes, well, um. Life's too short to say no. This is probably, um, a, 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 <clears throat> she, uh, she immediately composes herself. You should rest. I know you have, you've been out for a while. We need to see that all of your faculties are <laughs> still in working order. <laughs> Just um, remain here for the next few hours. I would like to do um, a, f a few tests. Ryan just grins and says he'll stay. I'm I'm just going to um <clears throat> compile some notes <laughs> and yeah she just kind of hurries up the room Brian reflects for a minute uh uh, shocked that he actually did that, but happy that he finally did it. <laughs> <laughs> Patient lot to date. Needs a full psychiatric evaluation. I didn't deny that she was crazy. <sighs> In fact, I embraced it. After, um, a few minutes, perhaps like a half hour, You hear a knock on the door. Ryan says, come in. Boom, boom, boom. The door opens, and a uh, man which walks in. Back from the dead, huh? Not even a god can kill you, tough son of a bitch. Ryan just grins, real big. Good to see you, man witch. He uh, pulls up a chair and sits next to you. So, how you feeling? Well, at first a bit confused, but a lot better now. I have decided that I'm still on your side. Well, that's good, I suppose. I, I don't know exactly what he did to you. Oh, he casually mind-fucked all my memories. Mm. Not so. Turns out he didn't actually raise me. Mm. Look. I know you just woke up and all, but, um... Palm told me some be... shit. <laughs> no, he's gonna... <laughs> no. When are you, uh going to be able to get back on your feet. Well, Palm requested that I stay for a few hours, and considering <laughs> I just asked Palm to date me, I feel I should stay. And I need to take care of one or two things, and then I'll be all yours. Wait, you did what now? Don't judge me. <sighs> he, um... He extends a hand to to shake your paw. I take it. He 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 takes it and he goes. He he looks at you straight in the eye and he goes. It was an honor working with you. <laughs> I'm 
Sorry to see you go the way you're about to go. <laughs> Not even jokingly, he's like just straight up serious. <laughs> just uh As he walks out, Pom walks in and he, he looks at her and he just goes Oh easy on him. I still need him. <laughs> She's like as she, she just, leaves, I say, I enjoy Palm's work. <clears throat> she blushes again. She says, <clears throat> <clears throat> this, this, this is just a um, standard patient-doctor relationship. Ah, <laughs> <sighs> uh, huh. Just when you bring, give him, give him back. Make sure he can still walk. Please leave. <laughs> this grumbles and walks out. As the door closes, uh, she sits down. She begins um, doing her tests. She pulls out a little notepad. Now, I would like you to tell me in detail everything that you can remember. Uh, that happened while I was asleep, or everything before? You were tossing and turning in your comatose state, almost as if you were having a nightmare. If you can remember anything, it would be much appreciated. Uh, I met this... Guy seemed vaguely familiar, named the Jack of Clubs, and he kinda showed me my past, my false past, and what my path or future could be. And then I fought a shadow near the hotel. Hmm. And then with the power of friendship he won. She looks up at you with a raised eyebrow and begins to hmm. So if I understand it correctly, you had an influx of memories that overloaded your mind. Left you in a comatose state. She's quickly reading writing. Then I woke up realized life is crazy let's make it crazier and then i asked you out <clears throat> and you still haven't given me an answer that i'm waiting for she just sighs looks at you you don't trust me you don't i do you, you say you do, but <sighs> you really don't. <laughs> uh, Ryan leans in closer to Palm and uh, just says, "Let's find out." Then she immediately just <laughs> slams, sl uh, just slams her notebook down. I have determined that you are fit for active duty and you may leave the hospital now. <laughs> Ryan it gets up and cheerfully leaves and just says, I'll see you later, Pom. Please leave! <laughs> I have lots 
of busy things to do. You are fit, Freck. Please. 